Abi Ahmed's insatiable hunger for power has defined his entire life, and he shamelessly admits it. His existence has been nothing more than an unrelenting obsession with obtaining and controlling the most influential office in the country. Abi Ahmed ascended to the highest echelons of power with the support of Abadullah Jameda, a prosperity gospel believer who had served as both the former Oromo regional governor and later as the House Speaker in the Ethiopian Parliament. Abadullah was not just a mentor, he held the dubious titles of godfather and mentor to a new generation of Oromo politicians who, like him, embraced the prosperity gospel. Unfortunately, these politicians have left a trail of destruction in the last five years, leading Ethiopia through one of the darkest periods in its history, marked by unprecedented death and destruction. It's crucial to underline that Abadullah's reputation was tarnished by scandal in 2015, when it was revealed that he possessed two fraudulent degrees obtained from a diploma mill. Moreover, he was infamous for being one of the most corrupt officials within the EPRDF. Abi, according to his own admission, had worked as a spy for the NSA for many years, earning recognition within the intelligence community. However, as he advanced his political career, he took a strategic approach, patiently waiting for the right moment to cultivate relationships within the US evangelical political establishment. Abi Ahmed had been actively working to foster connections with US evangelicals for years. His dream was eventually realized in 2016 when he had the opportunity to meet Senator Inhofe. During this meeting, he seized the moment to present himself as someone who had embarked on a personal journey to embrace Christianity, emphasizing his Muslim background and how he had discovered Jesus Christ. This narrative particularly captured the attention of the U.S. delegation. I met Abi for the first time in February of 2016 at a leader's breakfast where he told the story of his journey in faith in Jesus. Uh, very, very articulate, something that no one would forget about. We met again a year later where we prayed and talked. Senator Inhofe, a former Oklahoma senator and prominent climate change denier, faced allegations of corruption during his time in office his home state among the eight poorest in the U.S. Because we keep hearing that 2014 has been the warmest year on record, I asked the chair, you know what this is? It's a snowball, and that's just from outside here. So it's very, very cold out, very unseasonal. So here, Mr. President, catch that. During Senator Inhofe's introduction of Abi in the Senate, he made numerous grandiose and factually inaccurate statements. Among these statements were claims that inaccurately referred to Abi as a medical doctor and hailed him as the most highly educated African leader, despite factual inaccuracy. By selecting a new prime minister, and who is this? His name was Abi Ahmed, a doctor, a medical doctor, a doctor. We took a cursory look at that, and we believe he is the most highly educated prime minister in the history of the continent. Now, here's a guy who's the highest, highest educated prime minister, we think, in the entire history of the entire continent of Africa. It's commonly known that Abi did not write his doctoral dissertation. Someone else wrote it for him. My name is Abi Ahmed. I'm going to present my PhD proposal. Abi's educational background has been a subject of skepticism, with notable concerns regarding the legitimacy of his academic credentials. Allegations of substantial plagiarism in his doctoral dissertation have cast doubts on the originality of his research and academic integrity. These doubts extend to gaps in his educational history, questioning whether he completed high school, attained a bachelor's degree, or successfully obtained a master's degree. The overall authenticity of AB's educational qualifications remains a topic of ongoing inquiry and debate. 
Right now, a historic moment. Uh, we can now project the winner of the presidential race. CNN projects Donald Trump wins the presidency. The year 2016 was indeed a pivotal moment for Abby and held great significance in global politics. The election of Donald Trump as the US president had far-reaching implications. Trump's presidency saw the rise of the evangelical establishment, which wielded significant influence not only in domestic matters, but also in shaping various aspects of US institutions, including foreign policy. In 2017, Trump appointed Michael A. Rayner as the US ambassador to Ethiopia. In a televised address, Haile Mariam Desalegn said his resignation April 2nd, 2018, Abiy finally became a Prime Minister of Ethiopia. There is a growing consensus that the United States played a significant role in supporting and influencing the election and appointment of Dr. Abi Ahmed as Prime Minister of Ethiopia in 2018, effectively thwarting the TPLF's efforts to regain power. This sentiment was reinforced during a conference organized by Mekele University, where a retired TPLF official, Sebat Nega, confidently asserted that the US government actively advocated for Abiy Ahmed's appointment. However, it's worth noting that the US ambassador publicly denied any direct involvement in Abiy Ahmed's election within the EPRDF, Ethiopia's Prime Minister receives the Nobel Peace Prize. In 2019, Abiy Ahmed was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize and President Trump claimed that he should be credited for Abiy Ahmed receiving the Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, I'm going to tell you about the Nobel Peace Prize. I'll tell you about that. I made a deal. I saved a country. And I just heard that the head of that country is now getting the Nobel Peace Prize for saving the country. I said, "What? A, did I have something to do with it? Yeah, but you know, that's the way it is. Abiy Ahmed extended an invitation to John Lee Anderson in an attempt to improve his image and gain coverage on New Yorker magazine. However, this move had the opposite effect, resulting in an unintended outcome. During a helicopter trip through the countryside, he turned away from the view and declared how much he loved the US. Really, he said, America is a beautiful country, and the Americans are very good people, and I know the country, maybe better than some Americans. I've driven from Washington all the way to California. After Abiy's time in the military, he worked for the government in cybersecurity and intelligence and spent some time in US training programs. In the Iraq war, I fought with them, he said. I was the one who would send intelligence from this part of the world to the NSA, on Sudan and Yemen and Somalia. The NSA knows me. I would fight and die for America. Abiy gave a disgusted wave of his hand. Then these guys came. He was referring to the Biden administration. They don't know who their true friends are, Abiy Ahmed's statement is not just infuriating, it was highly unpatriotic, deeply disturbing, undignified, and deeply unsettling. Such statement is beneath the dignity of any leader entrusted with the responsibility of leading a nation. Abiy Ahmed's decision to accept Trump's negotiation offer with Egypt and Sudan on the Nile Dam was not just naive. It was an act bordering on treason. To provide some context, Ethiopia had struggled relentlessly for decades to secure the necessary financing for the Nile Dam project. Despite seeking loans from institutions like the IMF and the World Bank, Egypt's unwavering influence had consistently thwarted these efforts. In the end, Ethiopia had no choice but to finance the dam independently, relying on the contributions of its own citizens. For a full decade, Ethiopia had staunchly resisted involving external parties, determined to keep negotiations free from interference. 
Ethiopia rightly preferred a negotiation process within the African Union that would shield it from external pressures. However, in a shocking turn of events in 2020, Abiy Ahmed shockingly accepted the offer from Trump, allowing external intervention by the World Bank and the US. Amid relentless pressure from Ethiopians, Ethiopia eventually withdrew from the negotiations. Trump then shamelessly insinuated that Egypt might resort to bombing the dam, and he subsequently withheld aid from Ethiopia. We'll never see that money unless they adhere to the agreement. But they built a dam which stops water from flowing into the Nile, and you can't blame Egypt for being a little bit upset, right? How are they doing with that, do you know? That they can't do that. So the deal was done, and it's a very dangerous situation because Egypt is not going to be able to live that way and they'll end up blowing up the dam. And I said it, and I say it loud and clear, they'll blow up that dam and they have to do something. So whatever you can do to get them, Ethiopia, to do that, they're going to have to, okay? And we've cut off all payment and everything else to Ethiopia. And I'm telling Egypt the same thing, by the way, you know, because they could have stopped it. They should have stopped it long before it was started. I said, how do you let it get built? And then you say they, they have a dam. United States has become inextricably entangled in the intricate tapestry of Ethiopian politics, both directly and indirectly contributing to the ascension of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed and the Oromo nationalists. As we cast our gaze upon the tumultuous events that have engulfed Ethiopia over the past five years, it becomes increasingly evident that the U.S. bears a profound moral responsibility to alleviate the suffering of the Ethiopian people. The current trajectory of Ethiopia appears perilous, and should it implode, the consequences could be catastrophic, extending far beyond its borders. With its population of 120 million, Ethiopia is teetering on the brink of internal collapse. The potential for a failed state scenario is a distressing spectre, carrying with it the grim prospects of a migration crisis, a security vacuum in the volatile Red Sea corridor, and an existential threat posed by terrorists exploiting the chaos. The disintegration of a nation of this scale would be unprecedented in modern history. Somalia, sharing language, religion, and approximately 8 million people, serves as a poignant example of the challenges involved in reuniting a divided nation after decades of turmoil. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's tenure has been marred by a disconcerting disregard for democratic principles and a reluctance to embrace the reforms urgently needed in the digital age. The archaic governance methods reminiscent of the 1950s have become untenable in an era where information technology empowers citizens and fuels their aspirations for democracy and progress. Abiy must recognize that the Ethiopian people's call for a democratic future cannot be ignored any longer. The United States, as a global leader and champion of democracy and human rights, is uniquely poised to support and catalyze efforts to democratize Ethiopia. This is not just an option, but an absolute moral imperative. The suffering endured by the Ethiopian people, trapped in an unending cycle of political upheaval and instability, demands the attention of the world. The U.S. has a duty to employ its influence and diplomatic channels to aid Ethiopians in achieving the democratic future they so ardently desire. In conclusion, the United States' historical involvement in Ethiopian politics, coupled with its global standing as a protector of democratic values, places it in a unique position to positively shape Ethiopia's future. It is incumbent upon the U.S. to uphold its moral responsibility by supporting the Ethiopian people in their quest for democracy and rule of law.